So lots of fun little traps we're going to be discussing. Uh, some opening, end game, puzzle, uh, and a little bit of everything. So as always, I want to be at, uh, I'd like to ask you questions uh, before presenting you with the right move. So I want everyone to participate and hopefully you guys can try to answer the questions. And uh, please just post your answers in the chat. You can do just private chat to me. That'll be fine. And uh, again, if there are any questions, again, you can ask me as well in the chat. I'll be taking uh, questions there as well. So let's start. So what, are, what do I mean when I say fallen for traps? Obviously, I'm not talking about, oh no, my queen, Eric Rosen type of trap. <laughs> I think everybody who plays online is familiar with the type of traps I'm talking about. This is not for you guys. You are very strong chess players, right? We're not going to be talking about some pre-move traps or some garbage like that. We're talking about real game situation, right? So what would happen in the practical game when two players are playing? And especially not too low time control. I'm not talking about like blitz and stuff, but rapid and, and uh, more over classical where you do have time to sit down and calculate and answer the question. Yeah, Davis, not that kind of trap. <laughs> All right, so first we're gonna, before we start doing the, the puzzles that I have prepared for you and some game, uh, game positions, I wanna go through a game that was played by my student recently against Grandmaster Bellows. Uh, so my student is about 2200. Don't look at this 2059 rating as his real strength. This is some online uh, rating system they use. So think of it as a 2200 player facing a 2600 Grandmaster. And the typical game-like scenario that could happen. And we're going to be talking about various possible traps that even the grandmaster who sets up a trap might have fall into his own trap. So let's take a look. So it's gonna be King's Indian. So for those of you who play King's Indian for either side, this may be an interesting opening, but that's not the theme of today's lecture. So I'm just gonna go quickly through the line. So he's playing the Bishop E2, Bishop E3. This is called the Averbach variation, although not the main Averbach Bishop G5, Queen D2 sort of plan, he really wants to go for this e5, d5, and then g4, right? For those of you who are familiar with these lines, a very sharp play happens. Usually the board is all blocked off, right? It's very hard for both sides to break with c5 or for black with f5. And the game sort of has this strategic undertones, which may lull some people to sleep. That's a warning, but guess what? Tactics and traps are still on the agenda. So knight a6 is played. Notice how black, the grandmaster in this game, totally ignores white's expansion. So h4, he says, so what? What's the big deal? I'm going to play knight c5, hit the pawn. f3 has to be played. This is all part of the opening prep for both sides, I'm pretty sure. And notice what the grandmaster is doing. He's just saying, I'm going to play on the queen side undermining the deep one. Yes, h5 is a very good question, is a possible plan in these types of position, but that's a totally different type of position. So he's ignoring the queen's, the king side rather altogether. So white plays h5. Now we are familiar with the h pawn push from alpha zero and Leela and those neural networks, but we have to make you know, we have to prove to ourselves that this actually makes sense, this type of move. Okay, so let's see what happens next. A4, notice how both sides are just ignoring each other and black is expanding on the queen side, white on the king side. That's exactly right. Yeah, for those who are paying attention, I did talk about the H pawn, uh, pawn push as a prophylactic measure against H5 here. It's going to be very difficult to achieve f5 because we have the g pawn and the h pawn, right? Both. So this is important, guys. 
this is a very much a prophylactic idea running the H pawn down the board, right? So we're gonna have to stop Black's counterplay. Okay, so let's say what happens next. So Queen D2 happened, Queen A5. This Knight on G1 is a little passive. Yes, I agree with you. But this Bishop on G7 is not having a lot of fun either. So we have to compare every single piece, right? Not just one piece. H6. Okay, this move, by now, everybody has seen many examples of just locking up this Bishop on H8. And here is the big question for strategic players. Well, what is white going to achieve here with that Bishop locked? White can't really checkmate the king. But honestly, guys, that's not the point. Believe it or not, white has a different agenda. So let's see what happens. Knight h3, finally white is getting that knight in the game. So knight f2, bishop d7. Again, I'm not going um, to explain every single move. I'm just going to kind of give you the general idea. It's a rapid time control, 40 minutes plus 10. So it's kind of that weird rapid where it's a little bit closer to classical. Uh, so knight f2, rook fc8. And now, yeah, I guess you can call it classical rated. That's it's, it's that weird uh, hybrid mode. Um, I call it rapid, but in reality, it's closer to classical. Yeah, so black is playing on the queen side. White just cast on the king side. Now look what happens. So far, both players are sort of executing their plans, and black says, you know what? It's time. I'm a grandmaster. Takes, takes, and now b5. I am pretty sure a lot of you would play this way, and... Grandmaster Bellows, who is playing black, probably did not give this move much thought. All right? He's just executing his general plan. He's going to play b4 and try to win the game on the queen side. But chess is not a simple game. <laughs> Turns out that b5 allows an interesting idea. And my question is evaluate the move b4. Now, is b4 falling for black's trap? Or b4 is a good move not easy to answer without doing some calculations so take a moment or two and just try to figure that out and then i want to see your answer in the chat how would you evaluate the move b4 so it's white's turn right now black is about to play b4 himself so some calculation may need to happen Obviously, there is a takes b, queen takes b4, so make sure you calculate that. It is a bad move due to en passant. Okay, let's see if people agree with that. Yeah, black can't play a takes b, that is true. So that is one of the options. And probably that's what he intended during the game. He wasn't worried about it. I mean, he's a grandmaster. He just played b5. What do you think? Though? Anybody else? Bad, good, would you play it in the real game as white? Can you calculate some moves? So b4, a takes b, says Davis. a takes b, queen a1, looks interesting, but I'm not sure how to evaluate the resulting queen versus two rooks. Excellent question. Yes, so this is one of the key elements. We have to evaluate this a takes, a takes, queen takes a1 position. So let's get there. Let's play those moves on the board. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Queen takes a1. That's one of the key lines to evaluate, right? Rook takes a1. Check. King g2, more or less forced. And now who can tell me in this position who is better, white or black? At first, it may seem that two rooks are better than the queen. Knight takes b3 obviously doesn't work because of queen b2 and white wins, right? This is double attack. But what do you think, guys? Who is better, white or black? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people are saying that h8 bishop is not looking pretty. That's right. This guy is not looking so hot. So normally, again, two rooks versus queen is good for the side with the two rooks. But this is an exception. Yes. Yeah, so black is basically playing a bishop down. This bishop is not entering the game anytime soon. 
which means it's really two rooks versus queen and bishop. That changes everything. Even if black gets to play the move b4, you know, it's still pretty bad position. White is close to winning here, believe it or not. So this is one sort of trap that at first it looks like it's actually good for black, but it's actually really bad for black. All right, then we have to go to the other key move. Yep, so Eric is already ahead of us uh, in that line with queen takes b4. How can we evaluate this one? We have to decide between rook a, b1 and rook f, b1. Actually, I mistyped it. It's rook f, b1. So you have to make a decision. What do we do? Uh, the other option, much simpler option, by the way, is knight takes b5 for those of you who are looking at these tactics. But the rook moves are important too. We're going to talk about that. Queen takes, bishop takes. White is much better. Why? This guy is out of the game. Now, the funny part in this opening, you see black is opening up the queen side for white. Eventually, white's going to take over because of the extra bishop on d2. So this is a funny opening. Now, let's go back for a moment. So knight takes b5, we know gives white an advantage. Now, you had to calculate also, you may stop here. That may be good enough. But as an exercise, what about which rook would you play? Rook A or Rook F? Both are interesting. And there's a very interesting uh, nuance in there. Let's see if you can guys figure it out. So Davis was good about this knight takes B5 idea. That's a simple move to get a better end game. So which rook, guys? Rook A or Rook F to B1? Alex says Rook F. OK. Rook F, B1 is better. Austin, because the A pawn will be pinned after. Rook A, B1, because Queen A5 and the Knight takes B5. Uh -huh, the Rook on B1. Both seem quite passive, so hard to say. Yeah, Knight B3 is the key resource, guys. Remember we talk about traps? Rook A, B1, Rook F, B1. Knight B3 it was Black's main idea. Yeah, so we have to now look at Rook A, B1, Knight B3. Rook F, B1, Knight B3. So try to figure out how would you play after knight b3. Again, there is a little trap. At first, it looks black is doing great. But there is a little caveat there. Let's see if you can figure out what's wrong with knight b3. And also depends which rook you put on b1. All right, so let's start with our calculation. Rook a, b1, knight b3, your first instinct and correct me if I'm wrong, is to take the knight. Same rook f, b1, knight, b3, is to take the knight. But guess what, guys? He's going to take on c3, and black is getting counterplay. He won a pawn. So it is fallen for opponent's trap. There is a really cool follow-up. If you play rook a, b1, knight, b3, who can tell me why it's best move now? Very interesting move. Very difficult move, I have to say. 2600 level move. I mean, unless you're really good at tactics. Uh, queen d1, what if I take on c3? I have a cat here on my window, so maybe a cat will go away. I'm on the second floor. <laughs> what is the cat doing up here? All right. All right. After taking on c3, okay, bishop d3. I don't know, guys. You got to really expand your horizon. Keep in mind, white fell for a trap, but in reality, white sets up a very powerful trap. White has a monster move right now. You haven't mentioned that move yet. No, I'm looking at the chat. No one has mentioned this move yet. Knight d3, x clam. All right, I'm not sure about this x clam situation. g5. Yes, I see one person mentioned the right move. Good job, Davis. This is an incredible move, guys. Rook f c1. And surprisingly, a takes b is a pretty serious threat. What a line. What a shocker. We fell for the trap only to set the trap for black. Now, look how this line goes. Knight takes d2. Yeah, very difficult to find that in the real game, even if you're 2,500. Rook takes b4. Knight is under attack, knight c4. And the difficult part 
it's not the move itself. You can kind of use process of elimination. It's evaluating this end game down a pawn. Believe it or not, white is absolutely crushing here. Again, that bishop on h8 is totally useless. Rook b7 is coming, g5 is coming. White has a big advantage. Yeah, close. Actually, if you put it on an engine, engine's going to be almost like plus two, plus three station at some point, not just plus one. But okay, for our purposes, plus over minus is good enough. And then the other line, this is the cool part, comparison, rook f to b1, knight b3. Well, guess what, guys? White is still much better if you find the next move. Who can find the next move for white? Yes, Davis is again very, very sharp here today. Good job, Davis. Okay, let's see if anybody else can find the next move. A3, I'm not so sure. I can just take the free knight. Alex, yeah, Alex is good. All right, we have a couple of people finding this move. Knight FD1, same concept, right? Protect the knight on C3, give up our queen, go into the end game. And it's going to be exactly the same position as before, except the knight was on f2, which honestly doesn't really matter. In both cases, we have a really horrible end game. With the rook invading, we're going to win either the a or the c pawn, and black is playing down a piece for the rest of the game. So once again, what does that tell us? That tells us that a grandmaster thought that b4 move is not possible. Maybe he thought queen takes before knight b3, maybe a, b, but he missed all of those resources. And believe it or not, this move gives white close to winning advantage. Well, there we go, guys. Don't automatically trust your grandmaster opponent. But there's another really, really instructive moment coming up in this game. My student played rook a, c1, which is one of those autopilot moves. It's not, it's not shocking, Davis, correct. Yeah, grandmasters can miss these types of moves. And now he plays b4. Now I would have expected my student just to draw back to b1. In f a3, he can just take and he has a pleasant end game. Now he plays knight c d1. White, quote unquote, falls for the trap. What is black's idea, guys? Black has a really powerful idea. And white sort of falls for this trap. <laughs> it's going to be another one of those beautiful traps. So look at the massive pawns. I'll give you a little bit of hint. Look at these pawns. We're going to try to promote one of our pawns, right? To queen. How can black try to use a tactic to promote the pawn? A3, that's right. A3, good move. The point is B3. And here the grandmaster doesn't hesitate. Boom. Knight takes b3, pawn takes, rook takes, queen takes, and now incredible follow-up, knight takes d5. He saw all of this. He saw all of this, and white quarter pole quote fell for this trap with this move knight d1. My question is now, would you take the piece? You already piece up. Now you can get two pieces up. That's right, the bishop is coming alive. Typical King's Indian players, right? Finally, we're seeing the bishop connecting with the a pawn. This is every King's Indian player's dream. And how could you not play this if you're black? You want to just trust your intuition on this one. And he probably, Grandmaster probably played this on intuition. Maybe he did a little bit of calculation. Yes, it's a queen for three pieces at the worst. Well, you got to do your calculation. So the line you got to calculate is e takes d e4 in addition to e takes d a2, right? OK, let's see what people are saying. e takes d a2, queen a1, e4. Unclear, Davis says unclear. I'm not sure about that line. So the, the line Davis is saying after e takes d a2, right? Logical move. Queen a1 is forced. Other, otherwise, this guy is coming. e4. Right, and he says now sack the queen. King takes bishop d4. King g8 knight takes e4 with unclear. I don't know about this unclear. I mean, knight of six is not mate. I can play king of. Uh, I think black is better there. No. 
Yeah, so guys, we're focused on this ETXD A2 move for now. There's also E4, right? But let's focus on A2, Queen A1, E4. Let's see how well you can calculate. What happens after that E4 move? The bishop is hitting the queen in A1. Other than queen takes A8, right? Are there any other ideas for white? Okay, so everyone is calculating this line. E takes D, A2, queen A1, E4. Looks like it's time for white to resign or go for this queen takes a chain sacrifice, according to Davis. Is that so? Knight b2. Okay, knight b2, defensive move there. Not bad. White is still alive. Can we do a little bit more force and move other than knight b2? Yeah, that may still keep white. Okay, there is something better than knight b2, guys. Yeah, Jenny. Jenny is right. There's an idea that my, my, some of you might have missed. There we go. People are picking up on that. Davis already picked up. Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsey is doing good there with bishop d4. Bishop takes a1, queen, knight b2, triple x clam. <laughs> yep, I think people are catching up. So look at that. We fall for the trap. We fall for the trap. We play horrible queen move. It looks like it's time for us to resign. But there is this cool move, bishop d4, bishop takes, queen takes, a1 queen, and now remarkable move. The queen sort of protects g7, knight b2. Say thank you to alpha zero, say thank you to the h6 pawn, because there's a little checkmate on g7. Guess what? I think it's black who is about to resign. Queen g7 is made, right? The only, I mean, he can take one of one, but Materially, white is not doing that bad there, right? We got two minor pieces for the rook and the checkmate threat. So probably this is his best bet. And now to be accurate, I'm not going to play knight takes e4 yet because of queen a7 trade, right? Keep in mind, we don't want to trade that queen. Let's do this. Knight takes e4 in time for black to resign. This is absolutely winning position, right? With maiden threats and queen on a1. Trading for the rook. This is just game over. Black is busted. What a remarkable idea. And it only works if you don't trust your grandmaster opponent. Unfortunately, my student, right, trusted his opponent too much. And he did not take the knight. He played bishop c4. And after knight f4, fell apart, lost badly, game over. I don't want to show you the rest of the game, but I do want to show you that you should take the knight and you want to fall for the trap. You want to play queen a1 and you have this remarkable bishop d4. He had two chances to win, but he messed up both times because his opponent was a grandmaster. Yeah, maybe you're right, Austin. I'm not sure if it's just because his opponent was a grandmaster, there's a lot of trust. But in general, it's easy to trust the high rated opponent, right? It thinks you think, oh yeah, he calculated everything. But if he was playing 1500, he would have found it. Uh, maybe it's hard to say, hard to say. Although there's another line we had to see. There is uh, another move here. This move e4, right? We had to calculate just in case, make sure that doesn't work. But very simple answer to this is knight b2. And the key is once again, this end game we had to foresee, and we can. Evaluate this end game as plus over minus, in my opinion, because two knights are better than the rook. This pawn is weak. Our pawn on b3 is weak too, but I feel like we're going to get out of this pin and two knights will dominate the rook. Okay, maybe this is the best black has if he tries to go for this a2 line. So, twice, what did we see in this game? Twice we fall for our opponent's trap. It seems like right here, he did not even consider the move before. He did not even believe in that move. Well, it actually gives white close to winning position. Second time, it looks like knight d1 is a horrible move because of this beautiful double piece sacrifice, right? But we actually fall for the trap. And as I showed you, we have this remarkable, beautiful bishop d4 and knight b2 winning the game thanks to the h6 pawn. All right, so here was a practical example where you fall for the trap, but it actually backfires for black. All right, now that you're all warmed up, let me take you to the next example. 
I'm going to go to the next position. Marzi Bayand, the B6 variation, very, very rare line, but requires precision from white. So I'm going to make the theoretical moves here. You know, many possible move orders get here. This is typical Marzi Bayand. B6, very, very rare move. You almost don't see that, but it's actually got some poison in it. After knight c3, bishop b7, bishop e2, knight f6, castle, castle. White just played the most natural moves in the world. Everyone's going to play these moves from 1500 to your grandmaster. And now white should be slightly better because of space. You have three candidate moves. Rook c1, very logical move. Queen d2, connecting the rooks, or f3. Now, one may say, honestly, guys, I don't care in which move order I'm going to make these moves, it doesn't really matter. You can say rook c1 white's better, queen d2 white's a bit better, f3 white's a bit better. But things are not so simple. So I'm going to give you that hint. There is only correct way to play here for white. OK, Judd says f3, definitely. A d to f3, OK. Interesting. We have two 100%, but don't just tell me the move you want to play. Tell me why the other two moves are bad. How about this? <laughs> it's very easy to say, oh, I want to play this move for sure. But I want you to at least use some kind of possible elimination. They're not bad. OK. Well, if all three moves are great, why would I give you this puzzle? If all three moves are great, right? There must be some kind of a hidden resource for black we're missing. E4 hangs. OK, give me some lines, Eric. E4 hangs. In which line does E4 hang? Right now, it's protected by the knight. But we're getting closer. Alex says F3. OK. Wait, never mind. Knight takes D4. Rook C1 is bad. OK, here we go. People are now saying certain moves are bad because of knight takes e4. Mm -hmm. OK, so rook c1 is bad. But there's a little problem in your line. After bishop takes e4, then bishop takes g7, king g7, queen d4, check. Oopsies. I win the e4 bishop. So who falls for the trap in that line? So the line that somebody typed is this, rook c1, knight takes. We're going to talk about this line for a bit. Bishop takes e4. And this should be game over for black. So you got to calculate correctly, guys, when these forces sequences. So rook c1, so far, no one has proven to me is bad move. What about queen d2? What about f3? There is still three moves to discuss. All right, let's do a little vote here. How many of you? Uh, would play rook c1 in the game? How many would play queen d2 or f3? Or how many think all three moves are totally fine? Okay, Austin, I would play rook c1. f3, definitely Davis. f3, rook c1. So far, we have a uh, between rook c1 and f3. What about queen d2? Anyone queen d2? No. Queen d2, bad, since swap on d4 and then e5. Uh-huh. Very nice. All right, so far we are finding some interesting ideas. So queen d2 is bad, according to Davis, because look what black can play. Black can swap on d4. And now, not knight takes e4, which seems like black just falls for the trap. But this remarkable move, e5. Wow, what a move. Bishop takes e5. And now, all right, so e5 was that cool intermezzo. Knight takes e4, hitting the queen. Really remarkable. And after knight takes e4, bishop takes e5, black is totally equal. Well, you want to see who fell for this trap? Who played queen d2? You think queen d2 is a bad move? Well, guess what? I'm going to put queen d2 and I'm going to do an online search. And look at the names, guys. Friedman, Daniel Friedman, 2668. Flores, Yemelin, this Russian GM. Look at how many GMs played queen d2. And guess what? They all fell Look at the statistics. White scores 32%. They all fell for this e5 because they think knight takes e4, 
<laughs> is the real idea. And then black loses, but nope, it's the move e5. Okay, everybody sees this, this is a really cool move. And this is the problem. Let's look by ratings. Geller fell for the trap. 2600 rated tall Mikhail tall the greatest tactician ever fell for the trap what a cool trick isn't that e5 saves the day for black if anyone is better it is black all right so now we will eliminate queen d2 because it was beautiful we're still debating between rook c1 and f3 uh, by the way f3 is by far the best move okay so we already kind of established that but you haven't proven to me why rook c1 is bad yet. I want to see why rook c1 is bad. Who can tell me that? It's actually a very clever idea, very difficult. I think if I didn't know about this, I could see myself missing this. Rook c1, I could see missing Black's idea. I wonder why 43% score. Yep, I think most people are getting this right. So yeah, this is a very difficult idea, guys. Very difficult. You have to see that knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Remarkable move, bishop h6. Without this move, right? Remember, again, taking on e4 is not the best. Oh, Greg gave it away? That's all right, Greg. A lot of people got it. A lot of people saw bishop h6. <laughs> of course, now that the bishop is here, knight takes e4 becomes an issue all right you want to see who missed this all right let's sort by rating you know harlov very strong 2600 gm another russian gm another russian gm another russian gm a bunch of uh gms here some 2400s all right so basically lots of 2300s plus fell for this not bad not bad guys so that means in a simple position that probably this is as simple as it gets there's only one correct move among these three. It's F3, ensuring the pawn is protected, and then white can be happy with plus over equal. Simple space advantage, queen d2, rook c1, rook fd1, typical Marat bind. I have to say that knight d2, b5 is also not a bad move. A little weird looking, but you are kind of provoking a6, and knight can go back here. It's a typical idea in some positions, but F3 is by far the best. So again, if you saw F3 intuitively, your intuition is very good, but sometimes intuition doesn't always work as you saw in my previous example. G GM Bellows played this knight takes d5, ed, thinking that he's just winning there, he was losing, right? So intuition is good, but always back it up with calculation. Okay, so this is important idea. All right, you're all warmed up for the next one. All right, excellent. So this one is going to be fun. Here's the position for you. What would you play for white? Now, if you already seen this before, if you already seen this before, try to uh, contain yourself from publicly saying your answers. Uh, if you've never seen it before, this is good exercise because there are traps left and right. <laughs> this is going to be fun if you've never seen this before. So white to play and win. Simple position. I already seen answers. Wow, people are like on autopilot here. Why don't you take a couple more uh, minutes to really consider all the options? White has several options, so you have to make a list of candidate moves. Try to understand what Black is trying to achieve. And there may be traps left and right here. Yeah, somebody mentioned Rook C2. Rook C2 is a really cool idea, right? Trying to um, decoy the queen and uh, promoting the deep one. So a couple of interesting tries here. Yeah, Black has some ideas up his sleeve. This Queen A2 idea is not to be toyed with all right davis says i already found the trap if d8 queen rook h2 and it's a stalemate very nice job very nice job so you see d8 queen 
believe it or not, is a stalemate. <laughs> Rook h2, queen takes, queen takes, king takes. Oopsies, it's a draw. All right, so here, okay, we're focusing now on the move Rook c2. Greg is trying to solve it too, guys. Let's see if you can beat Greg to the solution. Rook c2, queen takes c2, d8 queen. And now Greg says queen to e2. Aha, uh -huh, interesting idea. Okay, so keep going there. Queen h4, right? Only move to stop mate. And then what? Yeah, Austin is correct. Austin says queen h4 there. Can you evaluate that position, guys? So everyone is right now calculating this line. Rook c2, queen c2, d8 queen, queen e2, setting up mate. Queen h4, white's got two queens for queen and rook. But who can evaluate that position correctly? Davis says bad for white because both queens are tied up. Very good. It's a positional draw. Absolutely correct. White can't do anything. Yes, correct. King h8, right? And if you play queen check, I just go queen h7. You have to go back to h1. This is absolutely remarkable position. Let's take a look at this together. I want to really show you this position. Queen a2, set an up mate. Queen h4. And let's just play some random move. King h8. Talking about a positional draw, <laughs> neither side can make progress. All right, so this is a draw. All right, so we're using a little bit of process elimination, but that's okay. During the game, you're also going to be using process elimination. So let's see, we just eliminated d8 queen. Uh, we eliminated rook c2. What's left? Anybody else can propose? All right. There we go. Okay, Davis is on the right track. Okay, continue Davis that line. Uh, Jet says rook b7, rook a7. Not really sure how that's helping against queen e2 idea. Well, you got to calculate Davis, right? That's why it's called calculation exercise. Okay, so he's on the right track. Let him figure it out. Uh, let's see what people say. Rook c1, queen d1 was my idea, but then there's rook h2 mate. That's right. Yeah, queen is guarding h2 mates, guys. Yeah, so his idea was uh, rook c1 with queen e2, queen d1. You're stopping this queen h5, but then you'll land rook h2 mate. Rook c8, okay, what about rook c8? That's a candidate move, of course. Let's consider that, guys. Yeah, funny enough, funny enough. You get the same position. You get a queen, guess what? We're back to square one. <laughs> All right, that's a funny line. All right, uh, Greg has a good hunch. He has a good hunch. So Davis beat Greg to it, but uh, I don't see a full answer yet. But uh, other people are still kind of trying to get, but yeah, I still, I think you guys are getting close to working this out. That's good. Yeah, this is really like your intuition here may help you, but you really have to calculate this out because like I said, none of these moves are so obvious. Like rook c2, rook c8 initially look great. D8 queen looks great, but we sort of eliminated all of them. Yeah, I'm not even sure after rook c3, I have to play that line, Austin. What if I take one, uh, I don't know, d7 or something? Yeah, or I can transpose, like you said. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, so we got two people on the right track. Everyone is, is getting stuck. Is getting stuck a little bit. This is a really fun one. So again, you got to really expand your list of candidates, guys. Candidate moves, 
you know, try to look at all the typical uh, ideas and expand your horizon. So you looked at rook moves. What other moves are there? Promoting to queen doesn't work, right? Rook moves don't really work. Yeah, I already talked about rook c8, Tim. All right, uh, there is a line that Dave just sent to me. All worked out to win. Let's see if he's correct. Here, here, this, 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 this. Um, okay, looks kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jed is uh, also on the right path. I think most people are catching up. So yeah, I'm going to give you a hint. It's under promotion, guys. By now, you probably figured it out. It's all force. That's right, Davis. Yeah. So really, there is not much alternatives. Huh, did bishop, people are saying. I'm not sure if you want to put a bishop on d8. Queen d8. Yeah, so the key is, uh, I'm not so sure if you see the main idea yet, but okay. Under promotion is the right one, but people are having a hard time promote to bishop or queen or knight. There's one specific reason why a certain piece has to be there, but you have to figure out. Well, how are you going to stop mate on h5? Yep. That's right. So I think Greg already found the main idea. Dave has got the main idea. Most people are getting this. Yep. Good job. Alex got it. So the answer is under promotion to a bishop or knight. Knight. Only move that wins. The only move that wins, guys. Every other move falls for a trap. Okay, so the main line goes like this. Queen a2, we're hitting the g4, h5 square. So queen plus knight combo, Davis, yes. This is very intuitive for a lot of people who understand the power of queen and knight. And now, of course, rook takes g7, opens up the king, right? And now the rest is pure calculation. Everything is with checks. So king is in check, king g8, check, right? King h8, check, okay? And we already know where it's heading. King h7, king g, king g8, it doesn't really matter. Everything's with checks. King h8 is mate, king f8 is mate. So under promotion to knight, is the only way to win. Remarkable, isn't it? So in this position, d8 knight only move. So learning, right? How to think for your opponent, finding ideas for your opponent, finding all these traps, and then using the process of elimination is one way of figuring this out. Some of you may have th thought about Oh, what if I just under promote two knight and try to rook g7? And sometimes you can get lucky, right? And get this this way, but the process of elimination is usually how you get this one. All right, very good. So let's move on. Another very, very cool puzzle. All right, so we are playing white, right? And our opponent is about to play rook takes e5 on us. or we can change it the other way around. Let's say we're playing black and we want to know if rook takes e5 works. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side you take, we have to calculate rook takes e5 here. So what I want to see is answers. Rook takes e5, black wins, or any other result. So why don't you take a moment here and calculate this out? Because rook takes e5 feels intuitively right here. 
Yeah, that's correct. D takes E, bishop C5 check is critical. So that's probably the calculation everyone has to make. King H8 is forced. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Then what? That's my question. Then what? <clears throat> so everyone is trying to look for ideas first for black, right? Because black is the one to move. So we're going to try to calculate that four sequence. Rook E5, Fe, Bishop C5, King H5, Knight G3, Hg. Queen h6, excellent idea, Alex. Well, Austin, we'll answer that question later. First, try to calculate rook takes e5. Okay, Davis is calculating. Rook e5, d, bishop c5, king h1, knight g3, Davis says exclam, hg, queen h6, queen takes f4. And now he found the cool idea for black. And he says it slides out after the next move. Let's see if people will agree with him. So Davis is basically saying rook takes e5 wins. He says it slides out, guys. I've calculated everything to mate. So Eric, try to calculate rook takes e5. Oh, no. Did I fall for a trap? Oh, no. Oh, no. Somebody fell for a trap. Maybe Davis can answer his own question. <laughs> this is the ultimate trap, guys. The ultimate. This one you don't see a mile away. I feel like everyone's going to fall for that. Aha. Uh -huh. He's answering his own question now. Okay, let's see if everyone else is, uh, is figuring that out. Okay, then rooks, but no, you give, give me lines. Don't just give me, I mean, yeah, you can say that way too, but if D takes E, black doesn't have, okay. But again, I want to see some calculation, not just kind of hypothetical statements here. So everyone is calculating the line. Again, rook takes E5, D takes E, bishop C5 check, king H1, knight G3 check, HG, and then what, guys? We've got to have some ideas for black. Very, very cool line. And then somebody said the right move for black. Somebody mentioned that idea to try to checkmate on the H file, right? After the end of that line, after the move HG. So again, we're calculating rook takes, pawn takes. Everyone's on the same page. Check, king H1, knight check, HG. And then what's the move for black? to create some threats. So it's pretty easy calculation. The next move creates a threat. Okay, so again, everyone please be on the same page. The position we're looking at is after knight g3 hg after, after all that. Black to move, what does black play? Queen h6. Okay, somebody mentioned queen h6. Yeah, I see people are saying. Okay, so the idea is just to move the bishop with mate. Okay, the other line people are saying, hold on, forget about queen h6. Fg with idea queen h4 mate, says Austin. There we go, another cool mate he found. Mm -hmm. So now we have two ideas going there. One is queen h6, and the other one's fg and queen h4 mate. Isn't it time for white to resign, guys? Except the queen is hanging. <laughs> yep, don't forget, the queen is hanging. So when you calculate, make sure that nothing is hanging. Yeah, so, so there is a problem in one of the lines that Austin, yeah, the queen is hanging after d takes e, right? So we've got to move queen h6. Okay, so the mate is pretty clear on the h file there. Queen takes f4. 
is white's only move. So again, for those who are following, takes, takes, bishop c5, king h1, knight g3, hg, queen h6, queen takes f4, and Austin says g5. What a move. What a move, g5. And if queen f6, then bishop g6, checkmate. Interference. And if queen f5, bishop g4, checkmate. Another beautiful interference. So what's the conclusion, guys? Game over. Checkmate, right? Black wins. Well, Davis is correct. <laughs> but let's see if everyone else catches up. All right. Tim, good job. Tim is also catching up pretty good there. So again, this move, g5, which seems like a lot of you will stop your calculation after the move g5, turns out to be not the end of the line. So again, try to really focus in your mind on that position with queen on f4 and Black just played the move g5. It feels like it's game over, right? It's game over because queen f6, bishop g6 made, queen, g, queen f5, bishop g4 interference made. But there is a remarkable idea that white has after the move g5. Again, we want to stress the importance of calculation and finding every single forcing move in the position. Remember, forcing moves are checks, captures, threads. That's right, Alex, got to calculate that line. So some people already figured out what white can do. Let's see if, let's give others a chance. Well, uh, Austin, there's a better move than just giving up your queen. You're right, it's not the end of the world if you can do that, but there's a better move. Yeah, Jenny, good job. All right, good job, Jenny. Yeah, there is one specific move that everybody missed initially in their calculation. All right, so I think by now everyone is already on the right on the same page except a couple of people. So let's make these moves on the board to make it a little bit easier. So we started with rook takes e5, which is bad move. All right? By now <laughs> I am not going to I'm I'm not going to say that it wins anymore, but it is a bad move. Check. Check. Queen here, queen takes f4 g5 and remember we said queen f5 bishop g4 queen f6 bishop g6 somebody said give up the queen queen d4 okay interesting but right now there is a remarkable move yes 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 only move that wins for white game over black fell for the trap Rook takes e5, loses the game. Now, you still have to prove it with a couple more moves, but the key is in every line, king takes h7, white is able to defend with queen check. And if bishop block, this queen h3 move. All right. And if king goes to g8, queen h3 anyways, white wins the game. So as long as we stop the h file pressure with, with this check, we sort of open up the king. Right, he cannot do anything else. Yeah, you forgot about Queen Angela, the queen, uh, queen going to h3. Wow, so this is the ultimate calculation, falling for your opponent's trap, only to prove that you actually saw one move deeper. Now, again, most people will stop their calculation and be really happy that they just played the brilliancy. This is a cold shower move. The brilliancy is now uh, by your opponent, and it's time for Black to resign. Remarkable piece of 
uh, calculation and fall. And this is the ultimate trap that I want you to uh, keep in mind from today's session. This happens to me a lot, Austin says. Yeah, not just to you. I mean, probably has happened to, to me, to other grandmasters, to everyone, maybe to Magnus Carlson. Because it's so easy to just get carried away with our own ideas, right? That we may miss a move from our opponent. Or we're so happy that we see a cool trap, right? Oh, he's going to fall for this trap. Rook takes e5 and I win. In reality, black loses because of this incredible bishop takes h7 move. You don't see that move coming a mile away. Even Davis fell for that trap because he initially thought black is just winning. So basically, guys, the to end the lesson from today, I gave you a bunch of different examples from real world scenario playing against a grandmaster to some really cool puzzles to some openings where it is very easy to miss your opponent's resources, especially unusual moves or moves that are deeper and always double check, check, triple check and ask yourself a question. Is the force in line really over? Because remember, it's not over until all the force and moves are exhausted. All right. Good luck. Thank you, guys. That was a fun lesson. Stop.